this week on Eat.Build, we're going to do a little side quest. So uh, one cool thing about using a key pair is not just signing and recovering, but you can also encrypt and decrypt, and we're going to dive into that. It's not necessarily uh, needed for the main curriculum of ETH.Build, you know, kind of getting to transactions, but since we have the key pair and we can encrypt with it, let's play around with that on a side quest. Okay, so uh, let's start. If, if you've watched the first few lessons, you know that we can take a hash, and that hash is going to be this kind of deterministic thing that is one directional anything on one side any size on one side always the same size on the other side okay and that size happens to be the same size as an ethereum private key so what we're going to do is bring in a key pair and plug our hash into that and if we say our just uh, we'll say our name is hashed together to make our private key. So this is Alice's private key. And we're going to bring that up here, kind of put that together to generate. Now that we have a private key that then is used to determine a public key, uh, which is this guy. And then that is hashed to finally make what we call our address, right? So you have your public address that you can share with people and you have your private key that is used to sign messages. And uh, in, in the case of this fantastic side quest, uh, encrypt data. So let's look at what encryption looks like. So what's interesting here is anybody can encrypt a message for me, right? So what happens here is you have an encrypt and a decrypt. Okay, and to encrypt it, I'll need a public key, and I'll put my message in and get it out, and then I'll put that encrypted message in here and decrypt it with my private key. So anybody in the world, knowing your public key, can encrypt you a message and send it out very publicly, and only you with your private key can read that very public message. Cool? And probably a uh, side quest to the side quest is learning about the difference between symmetric and asymmetric cryptography. Uh, the TLDR and you know crypto people are gonna or cryptography people are gonna have a sip and boof. But basically, TLDR symmetric has like a shared secret, and you use that shared secret, and you can uh, encrypt a lot more information with symmetric. With asymmetric, you don't have to have a shared secret; you just have to have a key pair, and anyone can encrypt for you without having to have any prior you know link up. I can encrypt a message to your key pair uh, without knowing you or anything, and and uh, it's kind of how like SSL works, right? When you get when you have the little locky thing in your browser, you you are using asymmetric cryptography to set up a secret to have symmetric cryptography. Boop boop. boop. Okay, side quest. Here we go. So let's take let's have Alice encrypt a message for herself and then decrypt it just to make sure we wire everything up and it works. So we'll take the public key. And notice this is not the public address. Remember the public key, I'm just gonna do it just cause it's so easy. Remember the public key is not, see that's a lot bigger. What your address is is actually this hash of this public key, right? So if I go and let's just pull the address up too and line them up. If I go look at that, we can see that the end of the hash of the public key is actually your address. So if you have someone's address, it's actually really hard to get back to their public key because a hash function is one directional and you already know that because you already watched lesson one. Okay, here we go. So we've got a public key from Alice and we're gonna plug that in and then we're going to mix that up with a little message called hello world. And now what we get out of that is this nice encrypted string. And I'll say this is Alice for, oh, did I spell it wrong? Oh, Alice, okay, this is Alice for Alice. So Alice is sending a message to Alice with her own public key. So that you can see how the message is changing as I'm typing and it's getting longer. But that encrypted message could go out across a public network and trusting math, we can, we can assume that no one can read it. So then uh, we're going to plug that encrypted message in here and then we're going to take Alice's private key that she should not have shared with anyone. This is just her and she plugs it in and she gets the answer. So we can see that we have kind of a pipeline here where Alice is encrypting a message for herself, showing this to anybody she wants, but eventually taking it home, mixing it with her private key and getting uh, hello world. Or I shouldn't say mixing, but basically using the private key to derive the answer of, uh, derive the, 
decrypted version of the encrypted text. I don't know. I'm not a genius. Disclaimer. Okay, here we go. So now we 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 have like our encryption and our decryption set up, but she's basically just encrypting for herself. Let's let's actually put this out on a public network and send some messages back and forth between between two. So to do that, we're going to have two different browsers, I think. So what we'll do is we'll just set up we've got our we've got our encryptor kind of hanging out down here and we'll uh, we'll unhook it and then we've got our decryptor and we'll put that up here okay and we'll unhook that okay so now we've got Alice and she can basically decrypt messages that come in and she can encrypt messages and send them out so what we need is our network layer and so what we'll do is we'll publish with IPFS some message and we'll just do it raw at first to make sure it's working. And then on the other side, we'll subscribe. So the way uh, IPFS PubSub works is you have this topic or channel that you follow. And these default to IPFS.eth.build. So technically, if two people are doing this at exactly the same time, they're going to be receiving each other's messages. And I tested it at ETH Waterloo. I had my phone on like one completely different cellular network, and I had my laptop on a different network or on the Wi-Fi. And I typed in something on my phone and I hit send and it did show up on my like, laptop, but it's like sort of, I mean, IPFS I sort of get, but there's some stuff going on under there with libp2p that is sort of magic to me. So I, I publish on one side and if I'm subscribed to that same channel on the other side, I get the answer. So let's just try it out to make sure it works. Uh, and I'm going to make this a text box and we'll see why later, but basically plug that in there. Stretch this guy out. Whoa, here. Okay, here we go. So now, if I think everything looks right, if I say um, sandwich chicken bottle, woo. I don't know why I typed that whole message in. I could have just said hello or something, but boom, it just published across the network. And anybody who is subscribed to ipfs.eth.build right now, would have seen sandwich chicken bottle roux for some reason. Okay, so now that we know that we're publishing, I'm going to, well, basically I think I'm gonna duplicate this. I'll, I'll take this whole thing because we, we probably will want to send some raw messages and some encrypted messages, right? And instead of having this be the message that goes out on the encrypted channel, I want this to go out. Okay, so we kind of have two methods of publishing. We can publish raw, or I can say this is probably secret, question mark, oh, can I throw an emoji in there, uh, fire, fire emoji, of course, all right, I've never tested this out, so we're going to see how this works, but basically, I'm going to publish that to, oh, oh, I need a public key to send it to, for now, I'm going to send it to, I'm going to have Alice send it to herself, and publish. Look at that. Oh, the text showed up over here. Okay, so uh, what went across the network is probably this giant string. Uh, no one technically should be able to read it unless they have Alice's private key, which they totally could get by taking the hash of Alice. But I'm going to plug that into encrypted and look at that. Oh, even the emoji came through. Home run, folks. All right, here we go. So now we have a setup where Alice can encrypt a message and send it across a network and receive that message and decrypt it. So let's detach the public key. Oh, I got to do it down here. Okay, and let's save this guy. Uh, let's take out this sandwich chicken stuff. Uh, this is public, right? And this is probably secret. That's better. Okay, now let me save this guy. So you hit save. Uh, you down. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here's a little trick. So if you're gonna download your text, put in a title, and we're gonna call this um, Alice, Alice Encrypted. That's a cool name. Okay, and we're gonna leave that title, I and mean, it's kinda of just gonna hide up there. Oh no, no it's not. My hacky React actually uh, that made a feature instead of a bug just now. Okay, so let's save this guy. If I hit save and then I hit download, uh, Alice Encrypted just saved, and so now, I'm going to shrink up Alice Encrypted and bring in Safari. Oh, what am I doing? He's doing it. Okay. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay. Holy moly. 
Sorry, if you're still here with me, I apologize. I don't even know why you're still here, but here we go. We're gonna finish this side quest. We have uh, Bob publishing uh, messages out to Alice. Let's see if Alice can talk back. Hey, Bob, wanna slide into the DMs? All right. Yeah, oh, Bob's like, oh dang, oh dang. Okay, so now what Bob is going to do is use Alice's public key. So we need a public key here, right? We need to send to someone, right? Who are we gonna send to? Who are we gonna send to? We are going to send to Alice. Let's grab her, nope, that's her public address. We need her public key. So this is tricky. You gotta remember public key, not public address. Okay, but boom. So now Bob has Alice's public address plugged in, and when he says, um, wanna meet for grilled cheese later? I don't, I don't know what's up with me in these messages today, but it's happening. All right, so now let's see if we can publish an encrypted message that is encrypted with Alice's, oh, look at that, look at that. So the network, just saw this big string. But Alice was able to use her private key to decrypt it. So Bob takes Alice's public key, encrypts a message, sends it out to everyone, and only Alice with her private key can read it. And they meet up for grilled cheese and live happily ever after. So side quest on a side quest, or maybe the challenge, side quest challenge. Side quest challenge is basically Alice assumes that Bob just sent that to her, and there are probably like a there's probably a network hash that or something that tells me who that was from, but we want to go full crypto on this. So the challenge would be to combine lesson two and the side quest to basically have sign and recover. So then you would send a message across the network that was encrypted with someone's public key but also signed by yours. So you take a message, you sign it, you encrypt it with their public key, they get it back, they decrypt it with their private key, and then they recover the message. So it might even have to be an object, not a string, like object, which is like message and, and, and uh, signature or something like that. They would recover that and get your address. So you would send a message, only they can read it, but also they can prove back using sign and recover from lesson two that you were the one that signed it for sure. So that is it. Thanks for sticking with me. It was a little crazy, a little, a little uh, you know, some rocky waters there trying to get some stuff across the network. But it did, and uh, so I'm going to have to go look at some, some publish, subscribe stuff with IPFS and really figure this out. But happy Bowtie Friday. Thanks for coming along on the side quest. Encryption with Ethereum keys. See you.